Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always yeah, keep it 100. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. We're always keeping 100. I am your host, Harrison. Uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for that amazing round of applause. I appreciate y'all so much. Um, um I want to take this time also to say thank you to everybody again. Last time I told y'all, if I'm not mistaken, I said... No, I was past that. Last time we was on here, I was at 2K. We getting close to hitting 5,000 subscribers. So I want to thank everybody that's been listening. I want to thank everybody for their feedback, constructive criticism, even some of the negative stuff that's going on. I really want to appreciate y'all because y'all still help me succeed in what I want to do. And I'm just going to make sure I continue to create good content for everybody. And I just want to make sure that I give my flowers to everybody for just sticking and supporting and watching, you know, the growth that has been coming over the years, especially, like I said, making it to this YouTube channel. It does require a lot of time and patience, and it does require you to just kind of sit back and let everything take the course that it's going to take. So I want to take this time to thank you guys again. We should be hitting 5,000 subscribers by the next episode. So um, that's not all. Um, I just want to also take this time to say that the you know, the the world has been recalibrated to let everybody know, you know, what it is, what it ain't. Um, I got uh, my little pet with me today. I don't know if anybody's noticed my little owl right here, you know. Um, he's basically the OVO version. I got this from Gigi himself. And as you can see, he asking a simple question. Who going to try Aubrey Drake, Aubrey, uh, Drake Graham right there? Ain't? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I got a little riled up because you heard some BS about to come. But um, I got this sent in from OVO themselves. They, you know, sent your boy the bird. This was basically like, you know, the letter to let me know that, you know, your boy is part of the gang, but they already knew I was repping OVO. Uh, started from the bottom league, number one draft pick. I mean, and I just say all this to say, I fucking told y'all. I told you, I told you, like an old Wayne song. Shout out to the one who set the path for Jersey, but I told y'all. It's a man from the six that y'all don't want to fuck with. It's a man that came through, got shot in the back, and didn't let that disability stop him from getting out that chair, taking off from the acting world and coming to this rap game and shutting shit down. And it was a little motherfucker, little big step up, baby step, if you want to call it, that sat there and said he was another one. He wanted to control. He was out there saying, ha, ha, ha. And now, like I said, this motherfucker saying, damn. And, you know, it's another motherfucker from, you know, North Carolina, Fayetteville, South Carolina, whatever party from. He from the Ville. Let's put it like that. North Carolina, you know, um, whichever one. Like I said, he thought he was going to step into the ring as well. And he's learned very quickly on that he just want to put his chin out and let people knock him. But it was another motherfucker out there. I think you already know. Uh, Champagne Poppy, uh, OVOXO, your girl at his next what show? He came through, and I'm just doing all this build up to say that y'all got the response that y'all was looking for from Aubrey Drake Graham. A lot of people want to call him a pop star. A lot of people want to call him a radio hit. Some people want to say he a target rapper. So you know, and all he basically did was show y'all to shut the fuck up when Drake is talking. And bow in y'all place, man. I say this to say that Aubrey Drake Graham gave y'all the response y'all was looking for. It wasn't something that he took off Apple Music. It wasn't a feature. It wasn't none of that. And my man came through and stepped in and basically pulled some 20 versus one shit. Now, I know some people out there that's recording that they done st stood up against 20 niggas and survived. Well, this is actually the nigga versing 20 niggas and telling the truth and survived. So, yes, Drake Drizzy Rogers, he dropped... The much asked for response to Kendrick Lamar and Future and everybody. And like I said, he stood he stood 20 toes, 20 toes down and just let motherfuckers have it, you know. So he dropped out push-ups, which is a diss, not only Kendrick Lamar, but he decided to go at everybody that's been talking shit because I feel like a lot of people forget 
that a lot of motherfuckers is eating breezy easy breezy beautiful cover girl type shit because my man aubrey jumped on your tracks right so from the get-go my man is shooting uh you know anybody to watch um Anybody that watch battle rapping, they'll know this line. Uh, Sue Surf said, free my dog, Sue Surf. If I shoot 100 shots, you can't duck them all. Boy, he jalapeno peppered their head to the fucking wall. Everybody that said something. You know, you had the weekend saying something. You had Metro Boomin, of course, with the slide shade. You had Future. You had Rick Ross. Unfollow him. All these people. You had Kendrick Lamar. You had... Basically, anybody that had an issue with Drake, they felt like it was the time to go. And, you know, my man was on tour. So he was like, I'm going to let this shit slide, you know, pause. I'm going to let this go, and I'm going to respond what I want to. And a lot of stuff that I didn't really understand was how much people decided that Drake needed to respond in a week to something that Kendrick responded back in four months. But also, you know, what also kind of helped him was, um, you know, there was a little, like I said, there was a motherfucker from the Ville. They came through and thought he was a battle rapper. And then he learned himself like this is too intense. He took his ball and he went the fuck home. And I don't, I don't have no problem with that. I ain't got no problem with it. I ain't got no problem. I ain't got no problem because this may not be, you know, what you want. And I understand that if this ain't what you, for you, then don't don't hop in this ring. But that man, Aubrey Graham, let me let, let me let me say these again for y'all. I'm going to just I said this last week, but I'm going to give y'all the hits of the diss tracks of what this man has done. First and foremost, is the nigga put a time stamp anyway. Just know he dissing somebody. But we got back to back charged up Duffy stay scheming 4 p.m. in Calabasas, 6 p.m. in New York, 5 a.m. in Toronto. Do not disturb 8 a.m. in Charlotte, 7 a.m. on Bridal Down Path, Churchill Downs, Middle of the Ocean, Red Button, Joe Button, Meek Mills. Common, Pusha T, Tory Lanez, Tiger, Kanye, <clears throat> Yay, Yeezy. I asked, you gotta count him as three different people. You got um he done diss Jay Z. I mean, like, come on, like he has never ran from a battle or contact nothing in his fucking life. So with that being said, why was y'all so dumb to think that my man wouldn't come through and spit some bars for Kendrick? And I'm gonna tell you how good it was. You know, it was um so good that it had to be AI. Now, you know, my only thing was I wish he would have dropped it officially so we didn't have to worry about was it, you know, what it was because it was, you know, some crazy type of quality. Um, it just sounded sketchy, but this AI thing is kind of taking over for people and it's really kind of like messing up what we all have gotten used to, but nonetheless my man stepped in the booth and he got to rap and he got to talking that talk he got to sit in that shit and he got to let y'all know again like yeah cool i don't put out hotline bling yeah cool i don't put out um what is it jumbotron shit i don't put out i better find your loving i better find your heart but he also put out this ain't what uh this ain't what she meant when she told her to open up more. This is back to back nigga. This is a nigga that put out Duffy. This is a nigga that put out all these tracks going in motherfucker going up the side motherfuckers head right. Um, Metro he told your dumbass to shut the fuck up and start getting them drums. So you know what that means? You shut the fuck up. So what Drake do? He saw Metro. He hit the Damn. boom, Damn. smack that ass. Damn. Then he he said future. Damn. He can never be a number one. You know. When he giving you all the number ones, well, I'm not gonna sit there and say future career wouldn't be the same, but let's not act like a Drizzy and Future track. You know where your ass was at, dog. When niggas started leaving, come on now. Um, what is it? Drinking on the weekend, like used to. Uh, come on, stop. It's a Drizzy track that puts you in the ceiling that you were in. Shit, what do you say about Kendrick? Come on, you doing push-ups for another motherfucker, splitting your income in other type of ways. You basically. You basically a slave in your own label right there. You first off, he talked about your shoe size. Again, some of it was getting kind of like, you know, I get the jabs and the purpose of it for, you know what I'm saying? Like size seven shoe. I hope you don't do size seven shoe, but you on you out there doing push-ups. You was about, like I said, you were saying ha ha ha. And then TDE, ha 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 Joe ass and said, Hey, we need you to hop on this Maroon 5 shit. We need you to hop on there for Taylor Swift. We need you to say something clever. We need you to be the big stepper, nigga. He shut that ass up. I mean, you know. The weekend he told you you taking you spending money on niggas on the weekend all the time to stay out there and pay them bills like a bitch ross he asked you straight up you need to worry about diddy 
And what 50 says to you, you 50 years old talking about grown man business. I know this probably hurting your joints to sit your fat ass up and think that you're going to come into the, the ring and stuff for all that. Then on top of who else, who else got it? I mean, it's just, let me see. Oh, ASAP Rocky. Come on now. He, you, he cracked you. You love bad bitches. That's your fucking problem. Don't nobody even listen to your verse on that fucking song. They go back to Drake verse. Like, be humble with y'all niggas, bro. Like, and you know, that's probably like the saddest part about all that shit is like niggas quickly forget about the hand who feed them. But Drake stepped in and let niggas know, Ross, you want to hop in for Metro and Future and all them, but you didn't say shit to me when this nigga was dragging his ass. But you know, out of that, Ross did drop a um a response called uh champagne something but to me personally i don't really feel like their beef is anything like real or anything like that i feel like it's just um i think they upset they'll probably piece it up later because they're not getting super super personal they kind of keeping it kosher like it was genuine respect it was genuine respect and it was like you know something there and i feel like you know just people are mad right now shh, shh, calm down but um during that you know what i'm saying but they still battling and then um he let kendrick know like fuck with j cole talking about that shit you said was weak nigga you know and think about like he said it's 20 niggas versus one so in a minute of three minutes and 53 seconds four minutes whatever version you got drake cleared the fucking room and i fucking love it you know what i'm saying i feel like niggas just think that they can just attack the man because you can see a lot of his music is uninspired to me personally. Now I'm not gonna say uninspired, but I'm just gonna say the passion to sit there and appease the hip hop heads doesn't seem like it's there because he's already done that. He's already number one. Not only does he do that, he's number one with songs to where he not even main right like the main contributor to it. Like he just like first person shooter was Drake J. Cole's song. He basically doing lobs for everybody else. And the most funny part is about all that is how can any of you niggas say something to him when y'all biggest hits got him on it? Ross really is the weirdest one out of all this. I mean, what is it? Aston Martin music, Drake, Dice Pineapples, Drake, Stay Scheming, Drake. I mean, your verses against 2 Chains was basically a feature in Drake verses. Now, how could your Lemon Pepper ass... Um, sit there and talk about anybody when you big checkers big french fries eating ass greasy back bitty back titty fat having ass nigga gonna sit there and say something about anybody first off how the fuck can your thick ass body shame somebody when you out there looking like a bowl a walking bowl of melted ass pudding ice cream just just you look like you need a, a body tuck you know what i'm saying like you need somebody to get one of them big clips pull all that fat you got and clip it so you like you got normal skin my nigga like no uh but also at the same time like i said you got lemon pepper you got the golden flakes like y'all have so many lord knows that's drake songs but y'all got so many songs together is it's kind of comical you know um so you know for your disc I don't really think you also realize that we don't give a fuck about y'all two beefing. Like we don't, we want to see Kendrick and Drake beef. We want to hear that diss track. I want to hear what Kendrick was saying because, like he, everybody said, he's been throwing shots. They both been throwing shots all this time. And what's cool and funny about all this is if you go back and listen to like older Drake songs, not from a year or so ago. Like the lyrics just pop so much more. Like even the one he did for the All the Dogs, the deluxe edition, Red Button, like, or I tell you what my brother them, like, they all start to resonate now. Like, you know, like niggas want to link up and diss you, but they can't cause they need you type shit. But you know, like I said, it is what it is. Y'all took a shot at the crown, y'all took a shot at the throne, and y'all thought because of that push of T shit. You know, like he was just going to bow down and that wasn't going to happen, bro. So I'm here to let y'all know, you know, like we just sat there and was like, who you finna try? Do you know hmm? who you finna try? Don't know. We looking, we look, calm down, calm down, calm down. We just get up. You know what I'm saying? Calm down. My fault, my fault. I got my old, what we call them, like I said, this is official 
OVO Hooch right here, the little OVO Hooch out right here, you know? Like I said, thank you again for the team, OVO, 40, Drake, Chubbs, Nico, uh, Baca, and all them. But I appreciate y'all for sending me the pet, you know what I'm saying? We're going to rep it good. But, um, yeah, all in all, I thought that this was very good. I thought it was very time. I thought it was I thought it was necessary what's going on. You know, a lot of times for this year, it seemed like the girls have been holding shit down for a long time. I mean, and they beef and they actually beefing. I mean, you got Meg and Nikki, you got Lotto and JT, you got, I mean, I'm sorry, you got JT and Glorilla. Shit, you had Young Miami and JT. Hey, oh, um, and then you also had uh, Lotto and Ice Spice. They the ones who've been really holding it down and niggas ain't saying nothing. But yeah, like I said, we had the girls holding it down. And they just been like just doing a better job of just keeping like the hip hop aspect of, you know, maybe controversy or battling stuff like that. Because for a minute when niggas was beefing, niggas was dying. So, you know, I guess it's probably why niggas stepped away from it. But, you know, from this Kendrick and Drake shit, you know, what made it so good was the fact that and J. Cole until Jake, you know what? Let's take this time also to just realize that it's a certain it's a certain level of hurt. I know you J Cole diggers is, is feeling right now. And I've seen it in my comments for my YouTube video short. I've seen it on my Instagram page. I've seen it on our TikTok, which both are doing great right now. I appreciate everybody for watching, viewing and commenting. But y'all really thought Cole was up there, huh? Y'all really thought y'all really thought the boy from the Ville was going to hold y'all down. And it's just so funny to me. And it, I just look at it from, the fact that he failed y'all and I love that shit. I love that shit. You know why? Because I just don't think that y'all really understand how much y'all dick ride a nigga who don't give a fuck about doing none of the shit necessary to go fucking win. So when you had that type of mentality, I mean, what, what the fuck could you expect anymore? I mean, y'all should have known he didn't care when he was doing when he didn't say when he said he didn't want to rap no more, he want to play basketball. And then he didn't even finish the damn basketball season. So it's it's like when he started growing his hair out and he was getting dreads, but then he just stopped taking care of the dreads. I mean, the shit he wearing right now is a step above homeless. Like the nigga just never follows through. You know, he had a shoe deal, shoe deal fell through. I mean, what what more can you say about the man from the field other than the fact that he is a walking disappointment? And that's why him and Kendrick got removed out the big three. And we put in Wale and we put in Big Sean because they know they place. We don't have to worry about none of that shit with them. They're going to stay in their fucking lanes. But as far as everybody else, now to get back to that, my biggest issue, like I said earlier with all y'all is, um, I mean, let's keep it a bean. Y'all couldn't do shit without this man. Now y'all want to beef with it, beef with him. And then when y'all thought y'all had him, it didn't work. So... Now he came back and he put everybody in their place. Like I said, they did they dropped a um we still don't trust you part two, and then basically put everybody who had a problem with him on this track. But I wanted to show you this is why I sat there and said um the 20 v1 shit makes it seem so much more because this is basically when it says like you know, backstabbers smile in your face all the while they want to take your place. This is basically the show from now. Let me see. Let me hey, put on for me when I ain't had nobody was Drake. I'm talking about Drake was the first person wow. to put on like before anybody. He didn't want to sign me. Yeah. It was like, yo, that's raw talent, yo. Like I, you got to shine, yo. I'm I'm gonna see to it. But I forever, forever owe Drake. Like I said, this is my brother Ace. Watch your back, Drake. This is my brother Kendrick Lamar. Like I said, this is my brother ASAP Rocky. This is my brother Kendrick Lamar. I said this already. You know, um, Kendrick was doing 5,000 people. Drake took him on tour for his uh, Club Paradise tour. Kendrick was doing 15 to 20,000 people. Poetic Justice come out, one of his hottest songs of Good Kid, Mad City. I mean, you know, swimming pools wasn't as big as Poetic Justice, and we figured out who Kendrick was. Fucking problems. ASAP Rocky's most mainstream hit that we knew him for. Drake on that bitch. Future, we ain't got to touch. Je Rick Ross already said that. Metro, I guess you upset about the 21 Savage thing, or he taking all y'all chicks. He even went at Ja Morant. 
told the little man with the gritty calm it down so you know um i ended there and just say y'all woke up a beast but the number one spot is still staying the same and your your your, your favorite rapper k dot on the clock he doing so many push-ups right now he up in new york doing pull-ups with niggas that's why he can't get in the booth right now because he gotta have pull-up competitions uh cold somewhere making some type of creme brulee some type of souffle I don't know, you know, chicken cordon blue or something like that. Cause he, he didn't have time to get cooking. So he wanted to go bake some other shit out there. Uh, Ross, you just talking about BBLs and, you know, uh, nose jobs and shit, white boy and shit. Like what the fuck is French Montana? Like, I mean, come on now you, you hang around a, a bevy of mutts again. What was this for me? You know, uh, it's nothing much to say anything to it other than, we don't feel like hearing no back and forth with you in it. I mean, you 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 are great for beats. You are great for putting people on songs, nigga. You're not about to out rap duel nobody, and you're gonna have to get on gangster shit. And if anything, from what I hear, Drake got a piece of the stake in the label that you in. So you lucky he even let you put that album out. You know, so um, we gonna move right along for that one. I just want y'all to uh, sit there and just sit there and just think that y'all was so close. But that man came through and blew that shit up. I just want y'all to appreciate that, man. Shit. Um, all y'all noise y'all was talking. Oh, Jersey, Jersey ain't ready to rap. Jersey ain't this. Kendrick will smoke him. Man, sit your dumb ass down. Silencing all that shit, all right? So let's move along to our next topic. I proved my point, man. Jersey Drake Rogers, OVO Drake. Started from the bottom. Number one draft pick. You know, eight more than 92. Y'all, what? <laughs> all I want to do is keep it what? 100 with y'all. I'm just saying, you know, calm down, calm down. What's next? Uh, we had uh, OJ die. And, you know, a person like myself, fuck OJ. Uh, don't give a fuck about him. And my issues for OJ is different. You know, if he killed that woman, if he did it, he did it. Did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. He going to answer that shit in hell uh, when they start picking people for the all american mcdonald's hell high school team whatever the fuck he gonna be at you know what i'm saying he the the pro hell bowl is wherever the fuck that nigga gonna be at but you know oj passed and it seemed like when he did pass this is the only thing i'll say when he did pass people care more about talking about the trial and the netflix special and the 30 for 30 special than they even cared about talking about his football career and you know he had 2000 yards he had a great college career he had a amazing college career he had an amazing he had a great professional career and you know i just feel that the overwhelming vitriol that happened to him was kind of funny and kind of crazy but the motherfucker earned that shit uh caitlin jenner bruce as some people have called it you've been a wild motherfucker so i'm gonna just leave it you know you a killer yourself so that's like a motherfucker. That's like the Spider-Man meme when both people pointing back at each other. And a lot of people said that you even did the changing of the guard, if they per se, from Bruce to Kalen after the murder. And for you to sit there and talk about you actually killed the motherfucker. OJ at least was found innocent on his charges. Did not do it. No, I didn't. Nope, did not do it. He just was like a dickhead. So, you know, I feel like I just feel like a lot of people, this is what I mean by people try to overhype or try to be too much when it's not sincere. When Bruce became Caitlyn and in the first year won woman of the year, everything was so brave and everything was so cool about Bruce. And then the more y'all put cameras in front of um, Caitlyn Jenner, the more and more I know y'all regret all the shit that y'all said. One, Caitlyn still dating women. Caitlyn is, I think, a Republican. Caitlyn just say stupid shit all the time to where y'all didn't do y'all research of it you know y'all personnel before y'all put them on stage and let them let let them talk so you know that's on y'all as far as the oj thing why i can't stand oj bitch ass and i'll tell it to you plain and simple oj didn't want to be black oj didn't want to accept the culture oj didn't want to accept the move be a part of the movements oj didn't want to do anything for change oj just wanted to be oj uh when they asked OJ if he was black. He said, I'm not black, I'm OJ. When it was time for the Olympics and Carl Lewis and everybody put their hands and fists up in there, OJ wasn't going to do that shit. He didn't want to support the civil rights movement. He didn't want to support any <coughs> of the black activism that was going on and that was really, you know, helping for the culture. And so 
why the fuck would he care about us now? Oh, let's seem to change it up. OJ's on trial for murder from um for murdering Nicole Simpson. No, I didn't. And during this time, that whole benefit of the doubt or you know, him being a movie star and all that type of shit and commercials seemed to go away. Now OJ is a murderer, and not only did you kill a motherfucker, you killed a white woman. And you didn't just kill any type of white woman, you killed a blonde hair petite cute white woman come on now you you already seen what that shit is gonna happen that you're not gonna end that one so why oj becomes a piece of shit is when oj goes on this murder trial all of a sudden oj goes from oj to orenthal which is the blackest fucking name that you've ever heard in your motherfucking life oj going to church black churches of that shucking and jiving and dashiki screaming harambe and all this other bullshit and then even for the trial where they had to take the jurors to oj's house they took out all the pictures of white families or whatever and just put up a whole bunch of black shit and when they was walking with him there he said why is all this black shit in my house because his lawyers knew that oj didn't identify himself as a black man his first couple kids are with a black woman he left her ditch her with to the white crowd he even said when Al Collins was bringing him back in the Bronco, which I ain't never seen a Bron- uh, police chase that looks so much more like an escort in my life. He said, what are all these niggas doing in Brentwood? Because that's where he lived at. OJ used the fact that Rodney King got his ass whooped and there was a public outcry for police brutality against black people. And OJ decided to and johnny cocker and his legal team all that tried to use that to show that you know people like mark Furman were playing stuff against against them whatever happened to that woman whatever whatever transpired they know what happened i don't know what happened glove don't fit you guys to quit like they had so much shit i think it was um i can't remember his name of the community i think it's dc carson the day day daddy from um I might got the name wrong, but his day-day daddy from Friday said OJ has so much convicting inf- uh, evidence on him that you was like, this nigga couldn't have did all that because it'd be an open shut case. My issue with him, like I said, is he didn't want to be black until it's time to be black. So fuck you. Use the Rodney King situation as a way to try to use the black spotlight in your honor because you, I mean, on your favor, because you had, uh, I think a majority black, I don't know how many people, I don't want to misquote it, but there's a lot of black people on that juror. And on top of the fact that it was a lot of racial tension going on, you don't trust the LAPD. The LAPD has a very great history of doing a lot of malpractice and a lot of mistreatment of color of, of people of color. Um, so black people don't trust the police. I mean, ain't shit changed to this day. Black people really still don't trust the police now. But um, even with cameras on, it ain't seem like they calm down from whooping people's asses. But OJ was like the embodiment of a piece of shit. And then on top of that, I don't know if it's just like a middle finger you dr- release if I would have did it. Uh, I think one of the tweets he said is OJ doesn't want to live in L.A. because he's afraid to run into the real killer. Motherfucker, if it came down to it, you wake up every day and brush your teeth and look at the real killer every day. And unless you ain't looking in the mirror, you got a mirrorless house. I don't know what the fuck you talking about. But karma came back for him, I guess, in some people's eyes when he got uh, arrested for stealing his own goods. But to me, like I said, it's still fuck OJ. I don't I can't respect that. And then even, you know, shout out to uh, J. Cole failed your podcast people over there um shout out to to that to the you know the people with the maxed up crew that just say that you know a black man needs to be not put torn down by another black man i agree with that completely and if it was any other circumstance i wouldn't come on here and disown or bash a black man but oj wasn't black in his mind oj said he was oj oj didn't fuck with us oj didn't do none of that shit oj did it use us when it was convenient I don't respect that shit. You want to stay over there, stay over there. And I'm going to stand 10 toes down. Just because you die, you know, don't mean I'm going to sit up there and say, well, uh, take me with you. Uh, I wish I, no, fuck all that. If I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. Why you alive and when you dead, it ain't going to be no more in it, but rest in piss, nigga. Like, I, I, don't, I don't do all this. I don't do all that back and forth for that fake shit. So, you know. I ain't going to write no good riddance. I ain't going to say that. I don't give a fuck. But if you ask me, in my honest opinion, fuck OJ. Um, he ain't want to ride with the cross. So you know what I'm saying? You, you do what you got to do. 
just hopefully there ain't no Diddy type parties in hell, you know, because I know that's definitely where you at. And, you know, when they run in the eye formation power eye on your ass in the trenches, you know, hey, you wish you would show that <coughs> stabbing technique you was doing. So, um, yeah, that's how I feel on that one. Unfortunate that somebody passed in general, but other than that, my honest opinion on them, eat a dick. Um, let's see. Our next one, WNBA just happened. Shout out to Angel Reese going number seven to Chicago Sky. She also went with the third overall pick from the South Carolina Gamecocks. I don't want to mess up her name. Let me look it up real quick. Camilla Cardoso. Yeah, she was the number three pick. And, of course, we all know who was the number one overall pick, which was the one and only Caitlin Clark. Now, Caitlin Clark didn't win the NCAA championship. She got our ass stumped out by um, Don Staley um, and the championship, but she lost. But we all do know that Caitlin Clark is the number one pick, was going to be the number one pick, and it should have been no surprise. Now, the only thing that people – this is funny to me. Um, it shouldn't be a surprise to people, but it is. What's funny to me is when people decide to care about stuff that they don't really give a fuck about. They posted Caitlin Clark's uh, pay or what she's going to make, and they posted the average salary for her, Angel Reese, all them people. I mean, they're getting about the same thing. And then people realize that for them to be professional athletes, they make more than the women in the WNBA which is what the male NBA players and a lot of people have been doing to try to make sure that they were compensated fairly. So let me pull up this picture for y'all to see right here. This is what Caitlin Clark makes. And a lot of you are already making more than her, but for her to be a celebrity professional athlete, this should really kind of blow your mind. Hold on. So as y'all can see, Caitlin Clark is the number one overall pick for the WNBA and her four year, her rookie contract will equal out a total of 33 Three hundred thirty-eight thousand and fifty-six dollars for twenty twenty-four. She's gonna be making seventy-six thousand dollars for twenty twenty-five. She's gonna be making seventy-eight. Twenty twenty-six. She's gonna get a pay raise to make eighty-five thousand. And twenty twenty-seven. She'll make ninety-seven with the player option. At no point will she make over a hundred thousand dollars in her first contract, which she'll probably make the money in her endorsements and stuff like that. But this is the kind of stuff that where like we're we're um we're saying like when the WNBA has a lot of work that it needs to do as far as compensating these women. These are professional athletes. This is why they go overseas to play. But it's funny when you see the pay. I knew they didn't make that much, but it's funny when you see it and then you see the outrage that comes from it. But like you know, Angel Reese ain't making no more. But this is numbers that you should get for like being on the practice squad for not making it into your dreams. Um of doing it and so you do it a practice squad this isn't what the number one overall pick in the wnba should be making in any way or fashion at all so to sit there and see these numbers of course you're gonna sit there and get outrage from people but in reality this ain't nothing new everybody's been known that this is what these women get paid and this is all that's going to come out with it. Y'all going to fake care the same way y'all fake care when Ice Cube offered her $5 million to be in the WNBA. And instead of seeing the benefit of it, y'all decided to hate on her because Ice Cube didn't offer other people money in the NBA that's already talented. Well, let's look what the number one draft pick is getting. And let's see what some of y'all other people are getting, which is probably nothing. Let's see. And ultimately what it came down to, well, this is what she's getting. I mean, you ain't got to see what she's getting. But ultimately, this is a problem that I had when I feel like a lot of people that actually watch the WNBA. Like, this is this is my issue with it. Y'all don't give a fuck. Y'all don't support it. And y'all don't do anything to make the sport grow. I wanted y'all to hear probably some of the um this is probably the most realest line we're gonna get from any of this i wanted y'all to hear this one quick point and this is gonna sum up my whole argument none of you you all you failed them not me not men women failed the wnba ladies ladies name your top five all-time wnba players of all time come on that's it name five wnba teams name the wnba team in your fucking city you can't do it you don't give a fuck about them. They play night in and night out in front of nobody. It's a fucking tragedy, right? 
And then meanwhile, you look at the Kardashians, they're making billions. You know those Real Housewife shows? They're making money hand over fist because that's what women are watching. And the money listens. You don't want to watch this shit? You watch this shit. They just shoot it over there, drowning these whores in money. And purses and shoes and Botox. It's just raining. It's raining money. Yeah. So the money listens. You'd rather watch that shit. Real housewives, bunch of women just tearing each other down. Well, maybe that's why your husband left you. Maybe that's why your husband left. That's why you can't have kids, bitch. That's why your ass is as flat as your titties, bitch, right? That's the message you sent. We would rather watch that than see a bunch of women come together as a, as a team and try to achieve a common goal. We would rather watch them actually fucking destroy each other. Yeah. No, no, no. And then in the end, you come back and you fucking yell at guys. Like, and it's like, all right, so let me get this straight. I have to buy you a drink, stop the ax murderer from coming through the fucking window. And I have to watch WNBA games there. for you. I mean, y'all don't care. Like, y'all when are you going to pick about up when your end of the couch? You know, a lot of things, I'll just say this. Women don't have each other's back when it comes to shit, unless it's about what a man or somebody did to it. But when it comes to supporting and showing the actions and all this type of shit in silence, Y'all know where to be found in this instance, at least because the number one draft pick making under 500,000, her rookie contract. She's one of the top college players outside of Candace Parker and some other people. Uh, Cheryl, uh, not Cheryl Soups, um, Reggie Miller's sister, um, Sheila, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Miller. Like, come on now. So, I mean, Bill Burr said it all. So let's see. Do I want to talk about, you know, we could wrap it right here. Um, I appreciate everybody that's been rocking with us. I appreciate everybody again that's been following the page, helping us get to the 5K. Hopefully by the time the next time we come on the show, that will be a 5K subscribers on YouTube. But I can't thank you all again enough for everything that y'all have done. I appreciate everybody. Um, I appreciate all the doubters and the naysayers, you know, that, that has something to say about, you know, OVO Hooch, myself, you know, Aubrey, Six God. You know, everything that came through it, shh, shh, I'm, I'm closing out. But I appreciate everybody for um, checking in and tapping in. Uh, this has been another episode of 8 Morning 92 Podcast. If y'all have any questions or anything that y'all want to talk about or want me to talk about on the show, just make sure you email us at the 8 Morning 92 podcastcom You can follow our Instagram page, our TikTok page, our um, YouTube page, which I want y'all to find. You can hear us on all major lists and streaming sites. And um, I'm going to holler at y'all later. I gotta gotta put a little OVO owl to bed. You know what I'm saying? A little OVO hooch, baby hooch. So I'm gonna holler at y'all later. Peace. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 podcast. You know how we do. We always keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah.